tour with Jack Thompson, head of online activation at Danone. Now, I'm sure most people know who Danone are, but can you just give us the elevator pitch? We work for Danone UK and Ireland, but we're obviously a global company. Focus on four key categories, baby, uh, dairies, plant-based and waters. How many countries are Danone selling in worldwide? So we have uh, setups across the globe in, in each continent. What does that look like from an operational point of view in terms of you know, accessing all of those markets and just, just you know, the, the kind of ease of transportation and shipping across uh, international borders. So we have our own um, sort of operational setup in each country. So rather than having to deliver from Spain to the UK, we have everything set up there. But logistically, from a factory point of view, there's a lot of warehouse movements that has to happen. We create our baby milk, not only in France, but also in, in Ireland, so that we have to logistically bring that across. There's that logistical problem rather than the just problem of getting it from a warehouse to a retailer, I guess. And what has Danone's uh, strategy been around like, multi-channel growth? The channel changes every five or six years, the priorities change in that sort of quadrant that you see where suddenly two markets or grocers move from priority spot down into low priority or semi-priority with some investment. It changes up on a almost bi-yearly basis on how consumers are reacting, where they're shopping, where they're moving to. We know that discount is a really important part of Danone's business at the moment due to the uh, cost of living crisis that we're seeing. Are you on TikTok and, and if so, do you, or are you looking to develop a strategy there? So we are on TikTok from a, a brand content point of view. So we do deliver content on there. We aren't currently on TikTok shop. We are looking to launch one plan to fit a, a number of different areas. So marketplace, social commerce, and our D2C platform with one distributor. So the idea will be we'll have shoppable media across all of those platforms moving forward. Whereas at the moment, there is a bit of a dead end for consumers where they hit a certain point and have to go on a website to learn more to then move forward. So reducing those clicks to improve that conversion as well. One of the biggest operational challenges we found that retailers are having right now is shipping costs. Is there any advice that you could give to other small growing retailers to manage those costs? I think it's a really difficult one on the shipping cost piece. As a big company like ourselves, we're trying to make sure that we take the complexity away and deliver big trucks of, of stock to one, one distributor and, and do it that way. But for smaller groups, I know how challenging it is. So just looking at the say, the past 12 months, it's been you know challenging in terms of market conditions and you know cost of living crisis and stuff like that. What have you found has been working well at Denon? As a Denon company, we are 90, plus 90% of our products are non-HFSS products. So we're much healthier than a lot of our brand competitors. And what we've seen is the consumers that buy into healthier products are also spending more and shopping more frequently online. Therefore, we can take that message to our retailers that to drive more consumers to healthier products like Danone's products. Not only helps us as, as, as a community, but it also helps their sort of average spend in, in, in store and also the number of consumers that shop there, the more affluent consumer. Any other trends you can speak to there uh, in terms of what you're seeing in the market right now? There's obviously that cost of living piece and consumers sort of looking for an alternative to brands. So we're seeing a lot of private label consumption, which is a challenge for all big brands as we know, but the hope and the expectation is that we'll win them back over through taste and through quality and drive that brand loyalty through that. So it's a, there's a big challenge around driving conversion of lapsed and new to brand consumers and that lifetime value of those consumers as well. So some of the media that we'll run won't be massively profitable or drive a, a initial ROAS. But if we take on, on board that lifetime value, the next three years of that consumer buying into it, we can build a real ROI story that works for us as a, as a brand as well. There's one piece of advice that you could give to like a small growing e-commerce retailer right now, what would it be? It's about picking the right battle. It's about where's your biggest win going to be come from and also putting the consumer in, in the center of that decision. Where are your consumers for your products going to actually be shopping? And what do they actually want from the, from the product you offer? Make sure you focus on that as your key win for moving forward.